kid and you're asking like, what do we do about? Is you sign a contract with someone. So real quick, before you did that, did you... More than 30 years. I got my real estate license in the... Um, and your your origin story. Is that he uh, he made an age joke the last time we were... Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna use that KUKA. You know, I, I'm a little more strict with what I'm, I'm looking at. Uh, So I want you to start off be like, hey, you know what? My partner actually knows a lot more about this. If this, this is like a lifeline that you can mm -hmm. throw. Be like, okay, there's getting a lot. My partner knows a lot more about this process. Do you mind if we get on a three-way call with him and, 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 you know, we can go over some questions and things like that. And, you know, that way we can accurately decide on how, what's the best way to help you. Okay. Okay. And you say it like that, where we're not trying to take advantage of them. We're trying to legitimately help them. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And we're literally legitimately trying to see what's the best strategy for them. Because mm -hmm. sometimes the best strategy is not going with us and it's going on the market. Okay. Yeah. With a, with a realtor. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I walk people through that and I say, well, you know what? I mean, honestly, if this might, this might be the best strategy for what you're looking for, if you don't care about the timeline and you don't care about any of that and you know, and you want to go that route, I have about four or five, uh, trusted, um, realtors that I can connect you with. Would you like me to make that connection Yeah, and go from there? So now you connect up with a realtor and you talk with that realtor realtor is going to give you a marketing fee okay um if they close that deal okay yeah. and a lot of that's based on trust honestly so but you can follow up with them later on um and and things like that so um any questions so far um no i think that's good oh uh, my i well actually i just thought about it. So um, when you are working to um, get a, a seller under contract, yep. um, the paperwork that's needed, is it the same type of documentation like uh, like when I purchased my home? Um, mm -hmm. And I know that there was another form in regard to um, lead or knowledge of lead or something. Uh, but I thought there was disclosures. Okay. Yep. And I thought there was a third form. Or no. Um, so in a, in a retail market, yes, there, are, there are disclosures and a lot of the, the sellers, they do have disclosures and things like that, mm -hmm. that do, um, when we're talking about the investing world in our con, in my contract, I have it that, you know, the, the seller has disclosed everything to us. Basically, mm -hmm. basically we're signing off. Hey, we're buying this as is. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the seller disclosed all the disclosures that they're required to do. Okay. So when we do it as cash, okay. Mm -hmm. And we're buying it as is, then that's what we do. All right. Mm -hmm. Now there legally, yes, there is a disclosure form, when we wholesale, we don't have to necessarily worry about that too much. Okay. I say that because it's kind of built into my contract that the seller has disclosed everything that they're supposed to, to us. Okay. Um, now if you ask a realtor, all they need all of that. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm not a realtor. Okay. Okay. So keep that in mind. We're investors purchasing a property. Okay. We're investors purchasing a property that we, we already understand that there's lead based paint. Now, will you have to disclose that when if say you're the fix and flipper, will you have to disclose those disclosures when you sell the property? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, but right now I say we don't have to worry about that at the moment because what we need to do is find the buyer. 
okay now the main thing that you need with getting a property locked up is a purchase agreement okay that is the one thing that you need that is what gives you the equitable interest in order to be able to market that property you cannot you should not be legally i say this you cannot market a property that is not yours without equitable equitable interest unless you are an agent okay, okay. that's how we get around where we're not agents okay because we're not selling the property what we're doing is we're selling the right to purchase the property we're selling the paper so when we have the buyer what we're going to do is we're going to assign the the purchase agreement over to the buyer and the difference in price from the purchase agreement and the assignment is what we what the wholesaler you get paid okay um makes so, sense yeah it makes absolute sense so in that quick transition from mm -hmm. i'm obtaining this uh purchase agreement and then i'm finding an end buyer to um buy the home or the property Correct. Am I have? Am I responsible for insuring the property or any of? No, uh, you know. Okay. No, you are not. The reason why is because you still don't own the property. Okay. So I don't have any equity, uh, any um, insurable. You have e you have equitable interest, but you don't own the property, so therefore you don't have to insure the property. Okay. Okay. So the at this point when you get the pa signed the purchase agreement signed that's when you should be working with your title company get title started okay mm -hmm. a lot of times people say don't get title started until uh until you find a buyer and then you bring both of them all together okay and in certain situations i would agree okay if it's looking to be a quick if, if time is the of the essence you need to start it right away okay okay but i would be working with making connections with title companies and saying hey i'm a wholesaler work with wholesale friendly title companies in the area hey i'm a wholesaler we're going to be getting more properties you know we're going to be getting properties locked up you know i i I'm looking for a good title company to come to where I can come through. And if the title company knows that you're going to be working with them and bringing them quite a few deals or bringing them deals, mm -hmm. they're going to want to work with you so that if one or two doesn't go through, they chop it up to um, just doing business costs. Okay. There are some title companies that will have, will charge you for that mm. because they still put in the work for it. Right. Okay. okay. So you have to look to see what your numbers are. Now, when you get a purchase agreement, that is, is the most important thing is, is, is get the purchase agreement signed. Say it's it. Now I never, I always like to get the purchase agreement signed at what we're looking to sell it for or not what we're looking to sell it for. Sorry what we're looking to give the buyer. I don't really like going back for price reductions. That's just me. Okay. So that means, you know, all your comps and everything right up Correct. front. Okay. Yep. Um, now there are, are there times where, you know, after I'm getting feedback from my buyers, you know what? I missed a couple things, this, that didn't comp it right. Whatever the case may be. I'm going to have to ask for a price reduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are times that, that you will. All right. Those, those are called addendums. Okay. You can extend, make an addendum to do pretty much anything to change the contract. Okay. So you can have an addendum to extend it. You can have an addendum to change the price you can have, but the seller has to agree. Okay. So you have to have that home, that, 
that 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 talk with the seller okay and then they sign it over you get everything over to the title company and it goes through like normal okay um with that being said i don't really like to go ask for price reductions unless i get feedback and say okay i have a buyer at um i i'll just use these as round numbers by the way say we get it locked up for a hundred grand mm-hmm. okay and we're trying to sell it for 110 well buyers are coming and saying like the max i can pay is 95 okay and so now like okay so i talked to the buyer hey if i can get this down to nine if i can get this to 95 how fast can you close within a week okay great awesome let me do what i do go back to the seller talk to him hey you know i know we we're at 100 grand but i'm gonna do my best or I've been getting feedback is because my contractor had this, this, and that to say my partners said, you know, said this, that, and this, okay. My financing partners and you use what the buyer said in that. Okay. So if the buyer said, well, you know, the foundation wall is going to cost X, Y, and Z, I'm willing to do it, but I need this off. Oh, you know, when we walk through there, you know, the, the estimate came back a lot more than we thought it would. I, I'm not lying because right. it did. Okay. The last thing you want to do is lie to them. Right. Okay. But I'm, I'm, I'm not sitting here saying, well, I'm wholesaling the property. My buyer said no. <laughs> no, you're, 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 you're taking their, what the, your buyer said and you're using it in negotiations mm-hmm. i'm not lying to them the the estimate came back higher than i thought mm-hmm. what you know the comps came back high uh, lower than we thought blah 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 this that so because sellers will pick up easily on a lie if you're trying to bullshit them mm-hmm. they will pick up on that so fast and they will run yeah okay so i hit them at 80. All right, hit them at eighty. Oh man, eighty. You know, I. You know what? I think I'm gonna. You know what? I I think if we do, like, I have to be at eighty five. Otherwise, I'm gonna put it on the market. Okay, well, I got sold at ninety five, right? Mm-hmm. I'd rather make something than, than a. a I, I. They all don't need to be big paychecks. Yeah. Okay. So if I know I have a buyer. And the worst thing he can do, like, ah, oh, okay, let me think about this. You, you give him a little, you know, while you're on the phone, ah, oh, I don't know. Let me, mm-hmm. let me run some numbers, you know. All uh, right. Are you sure? Are you sure that's all you can do? Man, I'm trying to work this out as much way as, as we can. It, again, it's negotiating tactics. All mm-hmm. right. All right. I don't want to do this. My partner doesn't want to, my partner is going to kill me, but all right, if we can do this, all right, how about this? And you try to get down a little bit less and be like, but we can close it within a week. Mm-hmm. And usually that time frame helps that. Okay. Now sometimes it doesn't and you still end up going through with it, but at least you're making something. Yeah. Okay. And these are just rough examples that I've actually been through. Okay. So, you know, you got to keep, keep that in mind that use their motivation. The biggest thing in the beginning is finding their motivation and why they Mm want to sell. Mm -hmm. Oh, this was my, my dad's property. I just don't want to do anything with it. Okay. I'll take out all the sentimental things that you want, leave whatever you don't. Okay. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that. All right. Now, if you put this on the property, you're going to have to clean this out. You're going to have to hire a crew. You're going to have to do all this. You're going to have to spruce it up, maybe do some painting and things like that to get a homeowner to come in there and get approved for a loan.
was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room